Hello everyone and welcome to video number two of our PHP web developing tutorials. In this video we're going to cover some of the introductory elements of uh, PHP, just getting used to it a little bit. First we're going to start out looking at our XAMPP install directory. I want to point out a few things about those app install. XAMPP by default is installed on your C drive in the XAMPP folder. All of your web developing pages, all, all, everything that you're developing in these tutorials is going to reside inside the htdocs folder. This is the web root on XAMPP by default. And a few things to note about this, uh, web servers. When you browse to a page in the in the in our, uh, the uh, video 1.5b where we installed XAMPP, we created a little index.php file. And if you browse to localhost on your computer, it takes you it's basically showing you what's inside of this htdocs folder and we didn't specify a file name after this we could have specified index.php and it would have been it would have been the same but the web server has some assumptions about files and one of those assumptions is that your default file in the web directory the the, the one that it will display to the user if they just go to that directory is the index index.php or index.html also htm uh, index.htm is one so if we rename this file to something such as hello and say just rename that file and refresh this we're going to have an object we're going to get a 404 for that index.php and then if we just browse to the directory itself we're, we're no longer shown that that page we have to actually click that page some web servers would restrict access to viewing the, the file contents like this and the XAMPP by default doesn't so if you want to show a file by default you name it index is is the rule of thumb index.php that's the first thing we're going to cover I'm going to go ahead and delete that file because we're not going to use it anymore and we're going to go to our desktop we should have we can go ahead and minimize this our desktop we should have NetBeans on the desktop if, if you don't have it on the desktop you can get it in all programs NetBeans NetBeans so we're going to start up NetBeans and NetBeans, NetBeans by default shows you the start page you can uncheck this show on startup and it won't show this again we can close that startup page now NetBeans is telling me that we have some updates I'm going to go ahead and update and as soon as these updates are finished it's going to want me to restart the, the IDE so I'll do that and it asks me do I want to restart now or do I want to restart later I'm going to go ahead and restart it if you see that go ahead and update it get it up to date and restart it okay so we have a blank IDE right now I'm going to right click here inside the projects or you can go to file new project we're going to create a new project it's going to be a PHP project just choose PHP application choose next we're just going to call this and the cool thing about it is it's automatically putting it in the XAMPP HC docs folder so we're going to call this web dev one we may start another web dev later on in other videos but this is going to be the the web dev folder we're going to use for right now and you can save you can just leave this like it is and it will access that web dev folder automatically and then we can choose finish now this is creating a project in the web dev one folder inside htdocs and it's automatically creating an index.php page so let's go to our web browser and now if we look at our local host we'll see our web dev one folder here we can click that and we've got a blank page now for accessing all everything that we do in these tutorials we're we're going to use this web dev one folder inside of our local host so this is how we're going to access it from the web browser there's nothing inside the web page we've got a, a pretty much a default web page set up sort of some of the stuff that you've learned in the HTML developing tutorials let's give it a, a title web dev one save it and we'll go back just to see that that is working okay now the PHP files are basically HTML files with a, a PHP extension and anything that you did in HTML you can throw it into a PHP file like this and it'll be output as HTML so if you looked at the source of this page we would actually see HTML source just like 
we see in our IDE. The only thing you don't see is this right here. If you notice, that is not showing up in the source. This is the PHP code that is executed on the server. So this is important to see. PHP is inserted into uh, HTML with a less than sign question mark PHP. And you don't have to put the space here or the return down to the next line but you it's good practice to separate the code that way and this is a comment this see this part doesn't show up in the source either where it says put your code here this is a comment in PHP and comments can be designated with a double slash like this a double forward slash and that's a single line comment so everything that appears here on this line is a comment but if we go down here if you notice NetBeans colors comments a certain way, you've got it grayed out a little bit. This is not in the inside that comment. And there's another way to designate comments as well that's a multi-line comment. We can use a forward slash asterisk and if you hit enter, NetBeans automatically puts a multi-line comment there and this is a multi-line. This is a multi-line comment. So this is just commenting your code so that you can give yourself references or other coders references as to what the code's doing and if you save that and go to the web browser and refresh that that source you see that, it, that nothing shows up uh, that's good because this is a comment not one thing i didn't talk about much in html is html comments themselves you can add html comments like this with a less than sign exclamation point dash dash this is an html comment and then end it with a dash dash uh, greater than sign. If we save that and go to the web browser, the comment shows up in the source code, but when you look at the actual page, what is actually displayed to the user, the comment doesn't show up. That's just a comment. Comments show up in HTML source, but they're not executed. There's nothing done, nothing happens to them. Okay, so we can take that comment out. We don't really need it. So now you know how to put PHP in your document Let's see what you can do with it. A few, a few of the things you can do with it. The first thing we're going to see how to do is to echo statement. We can echo something like hello world, which is what we actually used in, in our installation of XAMPP tutorial at the end just to make sure that our web server was working. If we save this, our web page now has hello world on it. And if we look at the source, we see the hello world. That's the only thing we do see. Now, if you came down here and also echoed, how are you? Just put a question mark and save that. Now, if we go refresh again, refresh the page, you notice that there's no line break or anything there. That's just a straight across the board. So your echo statement doesn't create a new line. You can create a new line like this. Actually, we'll put the new line at the beginning of the second echo statement. This is an escape character. The backslash escapes an N. That escape N means to create a new line. So even though this is still going to show up, well, I actually added a space in there because HTML, if you put a new line in HTML, it creates a space, but it still shows up on the same line because we're not putting an HTML break in there. But if we look at the source, you notice that in the source, there's now a line break, an actual new line is created, and the how are you statement goes down here. You can also use other escapes like escape T for tab and escape T again. We'll put two tabs in there and save that. Now if we look at the source, it's going to tab it over twice. Let's take one of those out. And even though our source looks like that, of course our HTML stays the same, or the actual output looks the same. So that's how you can comment and use the echo statement. We're going to go ahead and end it there. We've discussed a little bit about files. You create your files as the file name.php. It's, it's just like an HTML document except it has a PHP extension and you can add PHP to it and the server executes that PHP. In the next video we'll be going into variables. I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you in the next one. Please subscribe.